Welcome to Modern Management of the Older Adult, brought to you by the Institute of Clinical Excellence. Podcast right after that. It's been a little slow. It's kind of early. Well, not too early. <laughs> All right, team. Welcome to the MMOA podcast. Today with me, I have Emily Sepp, who's a physical therapist assistant, and super excited to be discussing with her this um, new technology for medication management. Um, And just to like give you a little bit of context, so I first met Emily at MMOA Live, which was Mm -hmm. a super fun experience. We were in Kingman? Yeah, Arizona. Arizona? Uh, um, yeah. Prescott? Cottonwood. We were in Cottonwood. Cottonwood, Arizona. Cottonwood. That's right. Okay. Yes. I went to Kingman yes. a year or so later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. So we had a great time at the MMOA live course. I was cruising Instagram like you do and saw a really cool story about a new piece of technology for medication management. And just from my time in home health, man, I really like such an issue for so many of our patients who don't have a medical background. I think we tend to take that kind of thing for granted, just even some of the basics. Uh, But Emily, if you wouldn't mind, just tell us a little bit about yourself and where you treat, and then we'll get into a little more about just the medication management issue. Yeah. Okay. So I'm a physical therapist assistant and I have been for about seven and a half years Um, I've worked a lot of different settings. I did a stint of travel therapy, but currently I'm in home health in St. Louis, Missouri. Excellent. Very good. And so in your practice, you're home health right now. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, have, have you, what's your perception of this issue with medication management with older adults and, and their outcomes? Yes. So it's, I think every therapist probably has some kind of story or many stories that come to mind with this issue. Um, Just flipping the switch now being in home health um, compared to a hospital setting where it's just given to them. I don't have to think about it. Um, Now it's uh, a lot more responsibility on, you know, the therapist to make sure things are going smoothly. So, oh man, I just see everything from I walk in, there's pills on the ground. It's like, when, how old are these? (laughs) When, like, I don't know when this happened. Um, To just coming in like late in the afternoon with a high blood pressure and just asking, when did you take your blood pressure medicine? Oh, I haven't. And that was supposed to be my AM medicine. And so just going through their pill box and, you know, kind of sets back your, your session. Cause then you're calling the doctor if, if it's a super high reading and, and just trying to get things back on track to safely proceed with your session. So, yeah, definitely yeah. a big issue. Yeah, I, I, it was such a big concern for me with so many of my patients in home health. I treated primarily mm-hmm. in a rural area where just okay. like medical IQ was super low. Yeah. Um, when I was doing my onboarding for home health, just to like drive that point home because as PTs at the company I was working in, we would do start of care. So we were doing the initial mm-hmm. medication management, getting all the, yeah. all the interactions and everything. And just to like drive the point home when I was riding with one of the RNs that had a lot of home health experience, she said that she had a patient who would get all of his medications and dump them into a bowl. Oh and when he gosh. thought he needed something, he'd just pick something out. I don't Sticky know if his favorite <laughs> color, like... Oh no. Just absolutely <laughs> absurd, but terrifying. Like it's it's comical on the surface, but the reality is like it's really playing Russian roulette with medication. Uh it's really wild. The literature really backs that up. Because the reality is, I think sometimes, like, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, you follow the Institute of Clinical Excellence, the MMOA division. We're all about like high intensity interval training and strength training and mm-hmm. old not weak. But 
if you're doing all those wonderful interventions, but medication management is not dialed in, you're going to have outcomes. Mm -hmm. So even though it's something we tend to be a little bit um, uncomfortable with typically, unless you have experience in home health or doing med recs, um, it can be a little uncomfortable, but it's very important for managing rehospitalization, long-term outcomes. Mm-hmm. I mean, even early mortality, obviously, with the like yeah. pill roulette guy. I mean, yeah. he was really playing <laughs> yeah. fast and loose. Um, <laughs> so when I was cruising Instagram, I saw that Emily had shared um, a, a new piece of technology um, to help solve this problem. I'd love for you to share what it is and uh, what your experience has been like with it. Okay. So um, I walked into my patient's apartment and we were talking and, you know, getting into things. And then I just hear this noise going off and she was like, hold on, hold on. I got to take my pills. Um, So she walked over and like started using this um, device. And and, and immediately I was kind of like nerding out about it, asking her a bunch of questions that she had a pretty good, like mild cognitive impairment going on. So she couldn't answer a lot of questions, but she knew enough to go to the machine, take her pills, and then, you know, get on with the rest of our session. So um, I did a deep dive into what it was and talked to the family. And so um, what it is, it's a smart pill dispenser. And okay. how it works is that the the family will um, set up the, the schedule and the medicines and, and load them onto the dispenser. I've had her, I have heard it's a bit um, of a lengthy process to get started because you enter in each one and the name and the frequency um, and all of that. But after that, the machine just works, does, does the rest of the work. So um, whenever it, it is pill time, there will be an audible tone, a flashing light, and then across the screen, it'll just start notifying the patient um, that it's time to take the pill. So they'll go over and push the button, and uh, it won't dispense the pills unless there's the the cup underneath it. So there has to be the cup underneath it for them for the pills to go in. And it'll dispense them one at a time. It does take a while. It's very slow. It just like rotates the pills and drops them in. So um, and then they take it and then put the um, the cut back underneath. And so that part of it is, is so neat. But the other thing that I think is also really, really cool is that there's an app connected to it. Mm. So the caregivers can see in real time, they'll get the notification when it's pill time, they'll get a notification um, when they took the pill. There's also a notification that'll get sent if they miss their dose. I think it's after 15 minutes, they'll get that notification. Um, they'll get a notification when the pills are low. Um, so it kind of takes out the burden of the caregiver or family member having to come weekly to refill just like their traditional pill box. Mm-hmm. So it holds up in the dispenser up to 10 pills um, and a 90 day supply at a time. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. What's, yeah. So what's it called really again? Cool. The, so this one is called Hero. Okay. Hero. So. So yeah, it sounds yeah. like lengthy process to get it set up. You've got to manually enter what the medication is. So I imagine yes. there's like a little container in it to put like yes. medication, then one for the other and you enter it. But then yes. with this smart technology, caregivers can be involved and know when the pills were dispensed, they could reach mm-hmm. out to a loved one. Yes. Sounds like it doesn't dispense unless you put the cup in like this is pretty yes. cool. <laughs> it's really cool. And so you can also, um, the caregiver can dispense remotely. So I took that as um, like maybe like a PRN pain pill, which I thought was neat. I guess if the, the family oh. member can communicate and say, you know, I'm having some pain, they can um, remotely dispense anything. But I thought of a pain pill. Um, so that I thought that was cool too. So that yeah. they're not over under medicating them as far as pain goes. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, this client that you were serving, um, mm-hmm. what was her cognitive status? So she was in independent living, um, but very much like doesn't really know exactly the time of day um, or the, the day that it is. So um, she could follow like our sessions pretty well. Um, I think if she would have to manage her pills on her own, um, I don't think that would have, she, she doesn't have the cognitive ability to, to know when to take her pills. So, yeah. So even like with the schedule or alarms, like not yeah. going to happen. So probably yeah, even, yeah. 
of mild cognitive impairment, but maybe not full-blown dementia diagnosis. Right, right. Still responding to the cue, knows what to do. Yeah, she knew. She, like, right in the middle, we were talking. She's like, hold on, I have to take my pills. So um, it's just, it's a neat um, thing to keep people safe and healthy. Yeah, that's super cool. So Mm -hmm. um, as far as, like, the the payment side of things, Mm -hmm. like, how does a patient get a hold of one of these? And and what's the payment like? Yeah, so you they do not need um, anything from their doctor doesn't have to be prescribed or ordered through them. You can just go online on your own to the website and order. Um, There is, I think, like a $99 like startup or initiation fee. Um, But after that, it is purely a subscription service. Um, So it's anywhere between $30 and $45 per month, depending on how much you want to pay like up front or at at one time. Um, So yeah, it's just, I guess, between like three and $600. Um, and and to me, yeah, per year, sorry. Yes. Per year. Um, compared to if you have to transition them to assisted living, that's like thousands of dollars per month. Um, even bringing in some kind of a service to, to just administer pills a couple of times a day. I think, I don't know the price on those, but I can only imagine it's more expensive than $30 a month. So, um, so yeah. If you think, think about being a caregiver for a loved one. And you're having to like try to take breaks at work to go make sure your loved one is getting their medications and like heaven forbid, they've got to have them three times a day. You know, it's not just like AM and PM, Mm -hmm. Um, not having that flexibility, but yeah, the cost of like paying someone to do that. And then it's like, right. Coming in the cost of Mm -hmm. someone you would trust to do that. (laughs) Exactly. Right. Um, Yeah. I saw on the website, it was a super savvy way to think about it, but it's like basically like a dollar a day. Yeah. Yeah. There's on the low end. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So Um, it's like, man, the peace of mind and how that could help outcomes to prevent rehospitalization or proper function. I mean, even things like patients taking their Lasix at the wrong time. Yeah. Yeah. Which sounds like a minor thing, but if you're up peeing your brains out all night, you're not getting good (laughs) sleep, then you're groggy, then you don't have a good PT session. And our patients who are really vulnerable and frail, it doesn't take a whole lot to throw them off. But then you start mm-hmm. thinking about more vital medications like cardiac meds or yep. antipsychotics or like mm-hmm. this could help prevent a lot of issues. I think this is just a really smart piece of technology. Just to be clear, yeah. we don't get any endorsement from them right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for, for our podcast or anything, and nor does Emily. Uh, yeah. But man, just sounds like a really simple solution um, to a really big problem. Yeah. Yeah. And just following up on the the payment, uh, I, you can look into your like insurance policy. um, And I think that this device is covered somewhat under like a remote therapeutic monitoring. So it it might be covered under certain insurances, but it's not just like flat, right? Like Medicare doesn't cover the whole thing or the subscription. I think it's just a policy basis. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that makes me think like it's probably not because on their website they put like Medicare <laughs> eligible, but it's probably right. like an advantage plan or certain yeah. advantage plans, which we've got tons mm-hmm. of older adults, you know, living home somewhat independently or in independent living or that may have yeah. those plans. So mm-hmm. um, if cost is an issue, it sounds like there may be some help depending on your plan as well. But man, if you've got the resources, Right. Um, something like that. Someone's struggling with medication management. And I think this hits home for me too, because I mm-hmm. watched my grandma, my mom, who was an RN, go fill pills for my grandmother. And then we had yeah. to someone um, to, to go help make sure she actually took them when she was supposed right. to and help get ready for the day. Cause there weren't like, I grew up in a super rural area. There's no independent living or anything like mm-hmm. that in the mm-hmm. area. And uh, yeah. man, something like that would have been a game changer for her. Yeah. So. And just like if medication management is the only thing like that will push people over the edge to need to to move and displace them and, you know, totally change their quality of life to, you know, a new place and new people. Like if this is the only thing holding them back, I just I just thought that this device is can be like a, a future um, amazing thing to continue to grow. Yeah. Absolutely. If we can keep people in their homes as long as possible, as independent as possible, mm-hmm. you know, likely their outcomes are going to be better and saving them from yeah. 
medication issues or rehospitalization, this this sounds like this potentially could have a huge impact uh, yeah. on a lot of people for for their outcomes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Man, I- Emily, anything else you can think of um, that you want to share about your experience with Hero or or the applications of it? Yeah, I just I just think that it's like a double edged thing that in in the home it's such like a, a neat new to me device and on the other side just um that family members and caregivers can monitor compliance from far away it's just like the a double like win in my opinion so yeah i just thought it was so neat and happy to share more about it yeah absolutely that is awesome so Emily, thank you uh, for your time. I'm going to share just a little bit about some of the stuff we've got going on here around MMOA. So if you're looking to hop into a live course, like where I met Emily, this incredible clinician <laughs> leading the way in geriatrics, uh, I'll be in Richmond, Virginia this weekend. We've got another faculty in North Dakota, and then June 1st and 2nd, we'll be in Scottsdale, Arizona. And then the weekend after, June six, uh, June 8th and 9th, we'll be in Houston, Texas. Uh, so if you're looking to see us live, we'd love to see you out on the road. You get to connect with cool clinicians like Emily to stay in touch <laughs> and keep learning from each other, which is always yes. a blast. Uh, Emily, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for yeah. sharing about that technology. I have no doubt it's going to help a lot of clinicians better serve their patients. And um, yeah, just really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Yes. All right. Take care. Thank you for listening to the MMOA podcast. If you found this helpful, please share with someone that could benefit. And if you're looking for more practical content to help you better serve older adults, head over to www.mmoa.online, where you can learn more about our free resources, our community, continuing education courses, and our certification. Once again, that's www.mmoa.online. Thanks for listening.